Hi, everyone. Good morning. I wore a kimono today, and I hope you like it. Yeah? Let me just turn. I left Japan about 15 years ago. I went to Canada to study. And at that time, I didn't speak English at all. I wasn't able to. But for some reasons, many people who I've met for the first time seemed to know me. That was such a strange feeling that people seemed to know me. I thought about it. Why do people tend to look at me in the same manner? That was somewhat related to how I look. Because I look very Japanese. Even without this kimono, I do look Japanese. So at the time in Canada, in my college years, I was a little bit troubled by this stereotypical way of thinking about Japanese women being shy and quiet that I had a hard time going through or expressing my um, identities in a certain way. I felt that the gender stereotypes took my identities away. I came across some of the reasons why I felt that way in 2003. I was taking a class called the Samurai at Harvard. That class actually was all about the Samurai. So in every class, I've seen the poster like this. This is Datema Samurai from Sendai, here. So in the class, it's all about the samurai being physically strong and then negotiating with each other. And they have been always winning or sometimes losing, but gaining a sympathy. This sort of men-oriented way of telling history overshadowed women, and then they went into, uh, the women went into uh, behind the scenes. So I thought that maybe there might be the same sorts of women who struggle through the identity crisis like I have in Canada. I start to look for the historical sources once again, and then we let the, the sources to find out if any character, characteristics that I could find out. So I called that new project the Lady Samurai. So from the class at the Samurai, I decided to take on this project, just looking for new identities or the set of ethics unique to women in Japanese history. So by 2009, it took me a while to look, look for the sources and also going over the secondary readings. But then I discovered plenty of sources that actually tells me unusual characteristics of women. Some women use litter, litters to communicate with male samurai, and then they negotiated very well with um, others. And also, in some other cases, that women established independent social networks so that without knowledge, uh, having a knowledge of um, communicating with the male samurai, that they could actually spread the rumors and also talk freely about things. It's not always a good thing, good characteristics, but I also encountered some bad deed or many different sorts of um, unexpected uh, experiences that the women went through. But overall, the story, the history of the Lady Samurai seemed to be worth um, telling. So in 2009, I decided that, okay, I like to establish a course called the Lady Samurai um, instead of the Samurai when I went back to Harvard, this time to teach. So my class at Harvard was formally titled the Lady Samurai. And in my first year, nobody knew about me, and then no one knew the Lady Samurai on campus. So there were only 16 people sitting in my class. And that was very cozy and comfortable seminar setup. However, the, the uh, stories or the experience about uh, learning the Lady Samurai spread very quickly so that it actually went uh, over, uh, my class grew very much. So in the second year, it was 104 students registered in my class and also 251 students in the following year. 
I was lecturing in a big concert hall and then trying to write a book about the Lady Samurai, which is probably very important, not for me, only for me, or for Japan, but for a new generation who lives all over the world. But in a way of writing a book, a big incident happened. That was the time that I changed the way of telling a story about the Lady Samurai. The 2011, a Tohoku earthquake really changed the way of thinking history. When it happened, students were very, very sad, of course, and also they, were wanted, they wanted to contribute um, their knowledge to the reconstruction process of this region. But we are so far away that it was very hard to reach out and then to be influential. So some students decided that they wanted to create a movie. They themselves started themselves, um, uh, they, uh, they, they themselves start in the movies and showing the knowledge of the uh, Japanese history, knowledge of the Lady Samurai. And then they danced and sung so that they could actually convey the cheerful spirit. They thought that would be helpful for this reconstruction process. I totally agreed that history is a living being, that it's not only for a certain group of people, but it really helps to facilitate the international understanding and rapid cooperation at the time of the natural disaster. So in the last class, I stood up and then promised to my students that it is the last class, but I would like to carry on this process of spreading the story of the Lady Samurai as quickly as, as, and as, wide, as widely as possible. And here in Sendai today, not only to my class, but I'd like to promise to you and into Sendai that I would like to continue and to commit to writing and also spreading this idea of uh, writing history of the Lady Samurai. So I hope that in 2013, that many of you will be encountering a lot of Lady Samurai, not only in history, but also in, this, uh, in the current conditions, kind of current societies at, um, all over the world. So um, Lady Samurai will be coming to you. Thank you.